All right, today I'm going to be talking about how the Earth and the solar system formed. Um, and it's this idea of the, um, the nebular theory. which is also called the condensation theory. Now, the idea for this really just kind of tells us how all the planets in our solar system came to be. Um, but really, we start out, you can kind of think of it as four general steps. In step one, we start out with a nebula. Um, so a nebula is just a diffuse cloud. Here, I put all my dots here. And it looks almost a little too ordered, but I'm human. So we start out with our nebula, which is a diffuse cloud of gases and dust. Um, and this is kind of just present. And it's hot, so as it starts to cool, it's going to condense and it starts to fall down on itself. As it comes together in step two, it starts to flatten and rotate. So kind of draw a flattened disk um, as it's kind of coming down. This is said to have been about five billion years ago. Um, and we start to get a proto-sun that's starting to form in the center. Um, and that's going to be, it has fusion that's happening in this proto-star. And then we're going to start to see the accretion or the colliding of all of this other particulate matter. It's going to start to collide and combine and it accretes and grows into our proto-planets. So step three is where we have accretion. And, or collisions. And so if we were to start thinking about what this looks like, we would have our proto-sun in the middle, and around that we have bodies, kind of proto-planets, we'll draw them, that are moving around, spinning, but there, there are lots of them. They're kind of going around and there might be more, and as they're going around, they'll collide together and they smack. If you kind of were to imagine um, balls of clay, you're kind of, they're moving around, it runs into the next one and they smoosh together and they go around and around. As those protoplanets get bigger, they also are rotating and they get hot and the material within them will start to differentiate and will start to move inside of the body. So heavier things tend to go to the middle, lighter things tend to go to the outside. That's happening in this disk as well as happening inside of each of those planets. So in the last step, we get our solar system. So we have the sun and the planets. And what we have, we have the sun in the middle and these planets, we have one per orbit. And they're moving around and I've kind of drawn them kind of looking down on the solar system. And if you can imagine this horizontally, the sun's in the middle and everything's moving in the same plane. So in the inner planets, we have our terrestrial or our rocky planets. We have our bigger gas giants as we move out um, away from the sun. So now when we look at the early Earth, kind of going back to that planetesimal idea, it started out as homogenous. So all of the accretion of that material, it's kind of all there. But over time, the heavier stuff moves in towards the center and the lighter stuff migrates to the outside. This leads to some internal stratification of the Earth, um, and that kind of sets up what we see today. We have a core, a mantle, and a crust, heavier elements towards the middle, lighter elements towards the outside. Um, so this kind of continues. Now when we think about what leads to the next step um, with our Earth, so it started out we get this internal stratification. It's very, very hot. Um, the first surface on our Earth starts to cool about 4.6 billion years ago. Okay, that's the accepted age of the Earth. We have some mineral material that we can date to find out the age of the Earth, and that really agrees with this time, these really old rocks. But it's very hot. So we have new rocks forming melting, making new crust over and over again. Over time, when we think about this, let's see what happens next. About 4.4 billion years ago, a 
another body collided with the Earth, um, estimated to be about the size of Mars, struck this hot early Earth. Um, some of that material was incorporated into our Earth and some of it was ejected back out into space and that's when the moon came about. So that's the idea for where our moon came from. So this is going on. The early Earth had no atmosphere. Um, and that's partly because of our solar winds moving through the solar system. They would push any of that atmospheric gas that would get pushed out farther into space. So it didn't, um, it took time before we could have an atmosphere start to develop. Our sun cooled over time and then that allowed the atmosphere to start to accumulate. Um, when this whole process happened, we started to have, you know, here, I'll kind of draw this out. So our volcanoes are going volcanic outgassing, which is sort of the burping of the earth created all of the different, or it allowed all these gases to escape. And eventually as the sun cooled down and the solar winds weren't pushing all the material away, the earth's own gravitational field kept those gases present. Um, we started to accumulate our out atmosphere. Okay, um, now our early Earth, um, the atmosphere was very different than today. Um, it had water vapor and lots of carbon dioxide. So our CO2 um, was really strong. Eventually life um, evolved on Earth and with life we had our stromatolites, which are really cool. Uh, they come around, but things, stromatolites or things like them, we started to get some photosynthesis happening, which took a lot of that CO2. Um, through photosynthesis, it led to the addition of oxygen in our atmosphere to levels where we started seeing it recorded in the rock record. Um, we started to have enough oxygen present with photosynthesis happening about 2.5 billion years ago. All right, um, so kind of that's just a very quick look at where the Earth came from, how it formed, um, a really very quick look at um, the layering in the Earth. There are more videos you can watch about the Earth's internal layering, um, and then just a very brief history of how our atmosphere came about.